Fishing historic places, New Boston, Mass. We've been here before on the Upper Farmington, but there's a new kiosk. Fishing historic places loves the kiosk. Talking about Dan Brown of Boston moving out here in the 1760s, huh? Establishing a tavern here at the Farmington River and a general store. Wow, a little bit of history here on the banks of the Farmington River. And the thing about this area that we're at right now was this was a mill not long ago. You can actually see the field stone work here and the remains of an old mill, grist mill, lumber mill complex that stood right here, as we see with so many New England rivers. So in this episode, we're going to be working the Farmington River, and we're going to see what we can pull out of here. It's early April in western Massachusetts. The rivers are actually at a good height. We haven't had a lot of rain. And so let's see what we can make happen. Starting out here with the Euro Nymph, and I'm working right on the bank, right on the edge here. I'm gonna run it through here five or six times. This is a nice location. Run it right in here and pop it back up. I got Officer Price working just above me. You can see him up here. The key is, as I've said a million times, doing the Euro nymph, nymph dance. Watching the indicator, letting those nymphs get deep, letting them get down, having confidence that your presentation is working. My indicator is pink, set up underneath the orange line, and you can see I'm working close. I'm not going, oop, that looked interesting. I think I just had a little whack there. I've got the right weight nymph on, I can tell you that. It's getting down nice. I'm maintaining a nice tension, connection. You've heard me talk about the pink. Where's the pink? Not the prettiest nymph in the world, but this thing is effective. It's the second hit I've had over there. There you go. There you go, Tom. So this guy gave it, oh, a nice jump by a rainbow, beautiful. Not a big fish, but 
Well, he's not, he's actually not that small. No, yes. Ah, not a bad size. Actually, it's a pretty good size. Man, that's a choose it. Stocking some reasonably sized rainbow trout here, apparently. And, uh, he's already gotten him so wide. The second, the second I put the pink on, I threw three casts, and it hit the pink. See the size? Yeah, the, the larger size gets me down. Well, we're here. Oh, we're right here. I just missed another one. I don't know how I missed that. Hey, I'm running at you. I'm just looking at my indicator, and I'm letting that nymph get down. There we go. Oh, another one! <laughs> oh, dummy. And I'm just working this across the current. As you can see, I got the indicator. And it's like right when I'm getting in here, they're like kamikaze in it. They're hitting it hard. I don't know how I missed that. Two in a row. Looking like an idiot. Another one! Tom, that's three hits right there. I'm going to let you run yours through there. I just had three bags right here. I don't deserve a fish now. There we go. Oh, 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 oh. oh no. I'm going downstream, Tom. Go right where I was, Tom. A little soft water here. Get them into the soft water. Much smaller than the last one. Jumping around like an idiot. Boy, get in my net. So you can see. A happy little rainbow. Keep them in the water. Here in New Boston. Beautiful. Yeah. So I'm right over here. I'm coming across like this. Right in here. Right, right where I'm there is where we're hitting. And I'm going to move down. So give it, give it, because there's definitely, there's multiple fish here because I had three hits in a row. But you want flip it? Yeah, see the size of mine? If you need one, I got them. They really like the pink in the springtime. So I just picked off two and I'm going over here, letting Tom have some fun. I'm going to see what we can do here. Now, we're letting them go. I mean, these are state fish. They're stocked, right? We could be keeping them and not feeling bad about it. But you know what? We're out for fun. We're sportsmen. And that's what we're doing. We're having fun. It's not about bringing them home to show our neighbors. Look at what I got. Oh, yeah. Nothing wrong with keeping a fish, especially if the fish is injured, I always say. Like, like, okay, so I'm going to shorten it up. 
So I'm going to get enough line out to equal my pole length, right? So here's my nymph, here's my reel. So I'm going to check nymph, this little area right here. That's it. It's a nice deep hole here. And I'm going to pop this and let the nymphs get down to the bottom and swing in the current and just act natural. You see what it's doing? They're moving back and around. They're moving into that white water. And rainbows can be right in the middle of that maelstrom. Don't think they won't be. A lot of people will think that, you know, you, you're not going to find fish in that real white water, but I'll tell you what, you'll find rainbows there. Especially as the season progresses. The rainbow's like a lot of oxygen. And you notice up there that I started catching fish as I adapted to the flow of the water there. It's like, like I said, I learned the current dance for that particular spot. I learned where I needed to let the nymph get down, right? Not to drag it in that particular area. Let it get down. And that's what's going on here. Let it try, I'm trying to let it get down into the water column. Let it drift naturally. Watch that indicator. Okay, what I'm going to do now, maybe I didn't spend long enough there, but I'm going to kind of walk right over here carefully because the fire is very slippery this year. And as I walk, you can see the foundation of the old mill that was here. And it was improved not long ago, I mean, you can again see, look at that eye bar that is literally channeled, drilled right in there. So it's, ah, what would you say, 1890, 1880, that this would have been added way later. And it went right across, creating a mill dam. Now this pool under the bridge is famous for being a hole that the worm dunker frequents. You can see I got a rock ledge in front of me and what I want to do is I want to get across into the channel so that I'm not on that rock ledge. I'm a little beyond it. And that gives me a nice long drift here. Now the nymphs start coming up. Back again. Down it goes. Nice area. Swinging across the stream. Well, I don't really like that. You can see that stone house right there. I wonder if that was owned by the miller. Probably, because it's right on the old mill. Oop, that might have been a hit. Remember, the key is getting down, and I'm probably not getting down here. 
just because this current's coming across quick, I gotta let these nymphs get down. I feel like if I do, I'm gonna catch one, just like that. <laughs> it's all about getting, got another one. It's all about getting the nymph into the strike zone, as low to the bottom as you can. You should be ticking the bottom once in a while. Okay. No, oh, that's rude. Using the floating net. Nice. Isn't he pretty? Look at that rainbow trout. All right. So here's my nine foot fly rod. Actually, 10 foot fly rod. Nine foot fly rod up against this wall. And you can see there's some serious work that went into making these mills. This is all done by hand, you know. And think about how many floods have come rolling down the Farmington River, including the 26 flood, the 55 flood, multiple hurricanes. So they built the, these fieldstone walls. They work.